They say if you don't hurt anything after 40, you're dead. Anyway, what is clear is that pain is very common, and more so as years go by, right? What we propose here is to know when it is useful, because it indicates that something is not right, and when it should be treated and relieved. In short, how to deal with pain. Let's start. There are two types of pain. One is acute, which appears suddenly, and remits as we heal, as occurs with a toothache, a kidney stone, surgery or a bone fracture, and the other is chronic, which lasts at least three months, and can be a direct consequence of the previous one, or respond to a pathology such as arthritis or cancer. The latter is more typical of older people, and can condition life a lot by interfering with daily chores, sleep, eating habits, time spent exercising, being with friends and family, and can lead to anxiety and depression. As we can see, there are good reasons to take this problem seriously. It may seem absurd to describe something we feel so obviously, but for the doctor, details are very important, which will allow him to identify the cause and the best treatment. So you need to pinpoint where it hurts, when it started, whether it varies in intensity, and whether it does so in a daily pattern. There may be some other telltale symptoms. You should also be precise in your description, if it is stabbing, or on the contrary is dull, also called death, burning, or some other word is more appropriate. On the other hand, the intensity may vary if we adopt a certain posture, or use heat or cold, or even that some over-the-counter medication, or alternative therapy, may provide relief. All of this information along with a scale of intensity, for example, whether it is mild, moderate, or severe, will certainly help the doctor, and therefore, we will be closer to finding relief. Each person reacts to pain in his or her own way. There are those who convince themselves that they must be brave and not complain, and those who do not hesitate to say that something hurts, and to ask for help. What we all experience is concern about pain, and whether it will limit us in any way. That's where medical help is crucial in finding ways to keep the pain from limiting us too much in physical and social activities. The key here is that we never assume that pain is a feature of aging, and that there is nothing to be done about it. This is completely false. If a new pain appears, we should go to the doctor as soon as possible, so that we have a better chance of dealing with it, or at least managing it properly. It is important to treat, or manage, chronic pain, whether it is with medication or not, and that treatment should address the specific needs of each individual. It usually seeks both to reduce pain and to support daily functions while living with the pain. It's important to find out how long therapy will take to achieve some relief, because it may not be immediate. Sometimes you have to stick to a schedule to treat pain in advance, or at least keep it under control. In addition to measuring the benefits, assess whether there are any adverse effects and report them to your doctor. Or also, in Spain, through the web I leave in the link below this video. This is the only way to personalize the treatment, to choose the one that best suits you, as is the case with the treatment of hypertension, where it is rare to get it right the first time. It is well worth trying, because as the pain decreases, we are sure to become more active, while our mood and sleep improve. Certain diseases require specialized pain management because the usual approach is insufficient. For these cases, certain professionals are trained, doctors and nurses, who work in specific departments. These are the pain units, 
or palliative care. But let's focus now on the most commonly used drugs to treat most pain. Acetaminophen can relieve all types of pain, especially mild and moderate. It is found in pharmaceutical preparations that may or may not require a prescription. It is contraindicated in people who drink more than three alcoholic beverages a day, or who have liver disease. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, include aspirin, naproxen, and ibuprofen, among others. Prolonged use of some of these medications can lead to digestive bleeding and kidney problems, so extreme caution is necessary in older people. In addition, ibuprofen is contraindicated with hypertension. Opioids, also known as narcotics, such as codeine, morphine, and oxidicone, are used for moderate to severe pain. They require a prescription from a doctor, as they can be addictive and dangerous when mixed with other medications or alcohol. Other medicines used to treat pain include certain antidepressants, some anti-seizure drugs, and topical medicines such as patches or creams. Whatever treatment is chosen, it is important to remember that the adverse effects of medication can become more frequent and serious with age, so it is essential to stick to the recommended doses, as well as the correct way of taking them. For example, if you have to swallow a pill whole, do not crush it, and if you have difficulties, discuss this with your pharmacist, and never, ever mix it with alcohol or other drugs. One more thing, if you think that a medicine is not working, you should not change it on your own. It is better to talk to your doctor. Yes, we have already said it. Opioids are generally safe when taken at the indicated doses and for a limited time. But if one exceeds the amounts and or takes them more frequently than prescribed, then dependency can occur. This can happen to anyone, even older people. In these cases, there are added risks, such as dizziness and falls, among other adverse effects. Sometimes these treatments are the only ones available to adequately treat the pain. But many times there are other medications available that can and should be used first, and in a complementary manner. Regardless of what drug therapy is followed, there are other decisions that can help control pain. Maintaining a healthy weight will relieve pain in your knees, back, hips, and feet. Stay physically active, because pain can make us inactive, which can lead to more pain and loss of function. On the other hand, it is known that certain exercises release endorphins that mitigate pain. Get enough sleep. This can reduce sensitivity to pain, help healing, and improve mood. Limit or avoid tobacco, caffeine and alcohol, which can interfere with treatment and increase pain. Join a support group. Talking with others about how they are coping with pain can be helpful to us, and we can be helpful to others, while also giving us comfort in knowing that we are not alone in facing this problem. Some people with cancer are more afraid of pain than the disease itself. But most of these pains, caused by the disease or the treatments, are manageable. In any case, it's best to start early, because, among other reasons, it may take time to find the best way to manage pain. A particular concern is breakthrough pain, which comes suddenly, and can cause a lot of distress, especially at the prospect of its recurrence. This is an additional reason to have a pain management plan. In the advanced stages of the disease, the person may not be able to express the pain he or she feels. 
It is up to the caregiver to interpret what the person's face expresses, as well as their constant changes in posture or their difficulty falling asleep. This may be a change in behavior, accompanied by increased agitation, crying, or moaning. If he or she refuses to eat, he or she may well has a mouth problem. If in doubt, it is necessary to consult a doctor or ask for specialized help. Not all people experience pain at the end of their days, but it is clear that if there is pain, there are ways to help, and issues of developing an addiction take a back seat. So don't be afraid to give the dose your doctor has prescribed. Again, remember that it is better to anticipate pain, especially if it is severe, because it is easier to prevent than to relieve. Therefore, the priority here is to ensure that the level of pain does not preempt the drugs to treat it. And if that doesn't work, tell your doctor, so that he or she can assess whether to increase the dose or use some other medication. Struggling with intense pain can be exhausting, and it can make it difficult for the family to stay together at such a special time. Pain can affect mood and make a person seem angry or short-tempered. This is understandable, but the irritability caused by pain can make it difficult to talk, share thoughts, and express feelings. Most people don't have to live with pain. Certainly, and as we said at the beginning, pain has a function, it can be useful, but it can also be a burden, because it does not inform us of anything useful, such as the phantom pain of an amputated limb, for example, or it causes greater ills, such as inactivity, or lack of sleep, as we have already said, although it is true that not all pain can be cured, it can almost always be controlled, if not by the usual doctor by a pain specialist. The adverse effects of pain medications are usually manageable. Constipation, dry mouth, and sleepiness may be more pronounced at the beginning of treatment, can be treated, and may disappear as the body gets used to the medication. The doctor won't think we're cowards for talking about pain. And if we don't talk about it, how is that gonna help us? If we see that a certain medication is controlling our pain, it is good to save it for later use at the first sign, and thus get ahead of the pain with something that works for us. The pain is real, and it's not all in the head. No one can know how you really feel, that's why it's so important to ask for help. And that's it for today, thank you very much, and until the next video.